touched on previous week's conversation, which I put first. And then we'll touch into the one we had last week, and then we'll drive into the new ones. Other ones. And I think they kind of, they kind of take a different tone this week. I think it's kind of cool how they have... I love it because one, one, one way it had a tone, this week had a different tone. Which I've been finding kind of surprising because some of the tone questions that we had last week, um, there's stuff that happened this week. If, you did not, if you're not familiar with the news, there was a young man who was shot in Sacramento, killed by police, an unarmed black person. And they thought he had, he had a gun, yet it was his cell phone, he was killed, and people were upset. Um, a lot of people hurting. I think it was funny because that's one of our questions last week, before it happened. I think the Holy Spirit times this stuff perfectly to, to get the church us ready to embrace hurting, embrace and what we need to, how we should embrace and with what? Love. When we don't pick sides, we need to pick people. Um, and both sides are people, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, <laughs> so I love it. I love it. I just love how it just all kind of flows. He's pretty good with that. Uh, so we're going to get started because that's our thing. So we just thank you, Holy Spirit, because you're here, buddy, and you'll help us uh, to clarify anything, to help us to understand. And I think not make fun of somebody because they ask a question. One of the couple questions are kind of silly. We, I'm talking about silly in the terms that sometimes we deem it to be silly. Um, and Holy, Holy Spirit, help us not to have compassion for people when it comes to the question. So we'll say that. I say that with caution. All right, so we'll go to the first one. I think this one's pretty good. Since following Jesus is a life of love, should, should I always be perfect in it? I think it kind of went with last week. We were talking about following Jesus and stuff, and this is, somebody had this question later on after, after they watched it in the week, and they had a question. I think it was beautiful. Should I be perfect in it? And the answer is, or response is? Yes and no. Yes and no. Progress over perfection. Progress in it. Progress. I think he's, he's not looking for us to be so perfect. Uh, he's look, more looking for us to grow. He, he loves the process. We want the end result. We want to be perfect. But he loves the journey and, and growing us. I think sometimes it's, I, I can picture as a parent and Korea can probably understand this too. It's like sometimes we do wish the kid will be there 18, right? And I think a lot of times as a parent, when they get 18, like, man, I wish I had more time. Enjoy the process. And I think we can relate because they start to think about it. Hey, I'm enjoying these moments right now as we're growing. Not trying to push them. We do we do get frustrated. We're like, like, oh, gosh, Grace, why can't you be 18? Like, what, why can't you do, like... A twenty-nine-year-old yeah. would do right now. Yeah, the twenty-nine-year-old mature response. This, this three-four-year-old, yes. and, so. we, and we're looking. And sometimes when we deal like that, we're looking for, for perfection instead of just progress, growth, and enjoying them through the progression of them. Um, it's kind of like Nora. Nora is a little dancer. My gosh, it's fun to be there with her as she grows in it. Today she was busting moves that we never seen her bust before and it was so spectacular. I can't wait for the next one. And it's growing with her in that. I think that's the same thing with us. Should we be loving all the time? Yeah, I, I think we should. I, I think in a way, we do need to love every single moment and choose love. Now, he's not expect. there's no expectation of us to walk in perfection. Because you know? he goes, do so, okay. He picks us up and goes, let's go. So it's always a mentality, let's go. Let's keep going. And, it's, and I think that's how, as parents, how we, I think that when we start to understand how you flex us, we start to act as parents that way. We start to treat each other that way. I'm not gonna bust you because you're not perfect. You're not gonna bust on me because I'm not perfect. I'm not walking perfectly, but you're gonna be there to encourage me to what? Keep moving. Um, Tim, I think it's good, you got anything to add? Anything, no, no? I really want you to answer this next one. No, I think it's good. No, I do have something to add. Go ahead. Before um, I flip the next slide. So someone, someone might ask a question. Well, then what's? I mean, if we're if we don't have to be perfect in it, um, <coughs> then what's the point? Um, I'm trying. Yeah. What's the point of trying? If I'm if I'm just gonna mess up tomorrow, you know, then what's the point? It just kind of cancels it out, right? But really, it's a journey, and you start to learn. You start to know him more. 
and, and I think that's what it's about knowing him more and the desire for perfection yeah this is like I think it's a marriage with you are we perfect not by any means mm -hmm. if it was perfect I think I think we would both be dry each other nuts I, I just I, I just I'm not trying to say that perfection is not good but it's growing there which is the fun part yeah there's there's relationship there uh there's um in the journey is relationship in the journey is 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 growth i get to know is, you more in the journey is you know understanding yeah. and, and yeah. compassion and, and and you know and knowledge and all that stuff that comes with it um so it, it's just like it reminds anytime i look at you know life I think about journey I think about our children and you know when they were when they were beginning to walk yeah um, you didn't beat them over the head because they, they yeah, fell down, fell down. it's so like I think you use that one analogy a lot it's almost yeah. like it's some it's something they have to do they have to fall down a few times in order to learn to get up and walk right and I, I mean it's like you, you're gonna make mistakes but it's all a part of. It's what you do to that. It's what you do when you make a mistake. I think it's the biggest, the biggest question. I think we talk about that a lot. We talk about business. It's like you're as a business, you're gonna make mistakes. It's how you respond to that. It's determine what kind of customer service you have. Uh, if I'm not right. And when kids fall down, it's the responsibility of the parents to not freak out. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think it's perfect. I think I, I do think. I think I think you had it right. If I was being perfect every single day do you think i would have the desire to know him no i really wouldn't i would actually be quite like i'm my own god i can do it myself and where did that get us in this world nowhere or into a pit into a pit yeah so i think and you truly don't understand who you are of course mm -hmm. i love it i love it because it actually you do i think you're right we get to know him more as we as we grow or even what a life of love is what it looks like. I'll read the question to him. Okay. You like it. So this is your coffee. Yes, yeah, my coffee, the big one. I don't want yours. Please don't. I thought you, I... You, he drinks his coffee black. No, it's not black. It's got cream and sugar, but I slop right over the top. And you <laughs> like spit. Oh. Okay. Who are you? How do I actually hear from God? Is it audible or something else? Also, how can I know that it is him and not me or something else? So this is a question we had. We talked about how, how to hear from him. I think mm -hmm. that was the question that we had. I kind of took it a little deeper because I think it, it has some parts to it that people typically will ask because I asked the Holy Spirit, said, Holy Spirit, what kind of parts do you want to add to this? So I think this part, and Tim, you like to flip? Go first. <laughs> oh, you go. No, 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 no. This is where I'm, <laughs> you I'm know. second. Yeah, you uh, first. How do I actually hear from God? Here? I like this part. I love the second part though. Is it audible or something else? I think so much we read the, the Old Testament and we're like, well, this is how he's supposed to be. He speaks audibly, or we assume that. Sometimes the Hebrew language doesn't say that, but we assume that. Um, the answer is no, not really, not. And yes. Yes, it's it's more it's more of something that's uh, it's like I picture it as a woman who has intuition. Right? We call it the intuition of a woman, a mother. A mother intuition of the children, right? They just know. Right? They just do stuff. It's almost like that. If I, if I had to describe it, it's almost like that. It's like a new desire from within that propels you to do something. Like, that's how he's talking. It's like, it's like crazy. Because I, I, I picture Hebrews 8. He's, he says, I'm literally writing on your mind and on your heart. It means he's talking to you with words, writing you, giving you what new desires, new stuff. I also have now compassion for some ways. He's talking to me. He's, I feel desire to love my wife. He's talking to me. Does that make sense? It's in, I, more or less here. Do, does it sometimes the rhythms, I love this. Does rhythm sometimes sound like words? <laughs> that, that kind of picks me up that, that, Rhythm, because he's talking about the rhythms of his grace in the message version. Um, it's almost like that rhythm. You can almost hear his voice in that desire. Mm -hmm. And you know it's, I think the next part is how I know him. Because it, if it goes beyond how 
you you typically roll in life a lot of times, I, surely it's him. If it's something that's off the wall, surely it's him. If it if it goes the opposite of how we truly really react to situations, him. Um, and it kind of goes from there. I'm kind of generalizing it as much as I can because I think we can get over complicated. Yeah. Um, but I like the mother's intuition because that kind of reminds me that it's like a woman, a mother just kind of goes, oh, you already know, like she hears a cry, or was it? It's hungry. It's like that. No, it's as you go, it's like you already know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what. For. for oh, oh, but you, no. you, you mind if oh, I. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, I will hear, um, like, for example, <laughs> um, go here. I'll hear it in me and it sounds like my voice. And over, over the years, I've just learned to trust, um, I, that it's not me speaking, that it's him. Um, I will sometimes, I'm also a very visual learner, so I'll see pictures, you know, in, in my mind, um, about... Uh, I'll see a picture and then then the words will come later. Um, it's it's just it's really it's really interesting how it's just really interesting how he speaks to us and it's unlike how th things are. I don't know. I it's it's a little hard to describe. It's simple, but it's <laughs> it's it is not so simple. Just try to keep it simple. Yeah. Most is possible. <laughs> but for me, I can. I'm just. I'm a visual person, so I'll I'll see picture, you know, I'll see images, and then sometimes I'll hear, you know, little little words here and there, and I'll know, I'll just know. I'll I'll, you know? I'll put it this way, and please, everybody, have a clear mind. What did I tell you the other night? She she rolled a ribbon and snuggled with me. Who you? Oh, I did. Yeah, I might tell you. I said there was some kids in bed and stuff like that. Don't that nothing normally happens. It's just us to get the snuggle. And I told you next morning that felt so good. It's so funny in the snuggling you were speaking. Yeah. And that and that to me is it's it, to me that's so amazing. Mm -hmm. And I picture it as like him. Even that I, if I have a desire, a new desire, or I feel and sometimes I, I can tell you, you can kind of feel his embrace at times. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that speak? It speaks to your heart. And it, 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 it's, he's actually speaking. I, I find that to be interesting. So. That's another great point. It's not just just words. I think, um, I think we're always looking for words. It, yeah. Now, to interject, has he ever spoken to you with a look? With a look? With a look. Yeah. Has she ever spoken to you with a look? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> and I say that. Body, lang body language. It, with just the face. Yeah. Forget body language, with just the face. Mm -hmm. Of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think all, all of that has something to do with who we are, why why we're here. He created us in the way, I think, personally, he created us in the way. We're like, we, I think we develop our senses when it comes to him. Feelings. So, so for Feelings. So for, so for the hearing there. of the ears. Mm -hmm. we, we discount all the other senses that we have and we we just like we're audible i can tell you this is funny tasting on food i can hear his voice does that make sense like i think tim well, we had we had conversations the one day about food because you had you got what was it do you remember when we went to kroger and they had your eggnog and they had the white chocolate um Reese cups yeah when you ate them could you not feel him talking to you mm-hmm even before, as you taste them, it's like even before. But it's like the taste. See, even with the taste, I can hear him. It's like he's talking to me. And I think as as the Christians, we get we get so out there. We discount all our senses, but this one, and yet he's smell, sort of smell, man. It's like it's all just beautiful. It all speaks. And I, I can tell you, anytime I feel that. I, just me. I, I'm talking about me. If you if you seem the same way, that's cool. If you don't, I'm not gonna feel weird. weird. But when those happen to my other sensories, I feel it here too. It's like it's stemming from here out. Does that make does that is that weird? Name? No. Does anybody have anything similar? Yeah, if I not, I, I kind of sense it here. It's like he's like coming out of me like. It's just weird. 
I'm probably freaking somebody out online. No, it is what it is. It is what it is. That's, I mean, that's what it feels like to me. It's like, mm -hmm. I can also sense it here in my heart and in, in my soul, the soul. I can feel him talking. Yeah. Which, which leads to a question for both of y'all. Do you speak to Grace the same way you speak to Nora? No. Why? The two different First, ones. you. Yeah, well, is what she says, too. They're two different. They're different. They're in, they're in, Individuals, they're, they learn differently. They, they different. understand differently. They hear differently. Um, um, yeah. They hear differently. Mm -hmm. Nora. They see differently. <laughs> like to talk to them sometimes and get them to understand stuff. Gracie, you usually can just tell her. She'll ask questions. Nora, you have to walk beside her and walk through it. And that's, they're too different. Judah, we don't know quite, you know, yet. He's a, a weird beast and different beast and um, all of that. He's a wildebeest. beast. That's my beast. <laughs> He's a lion. He was acting like a lion in the car. Yeah. Living up to his name, Judah, right? Uh, <laughs> but it's like they, they have two different ways of communicating or really understanding. So you have to kind of tap into those. And I think for us, we all understand it a little differently mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I'll take the last one. How can I know that it is him and not me or something else? What people don't understand is that there are four voices, one, two, three, four, that rattle around inside our head. First is our voice. Second, God's voice. Third, the enemy's voice. Fourth, other people's voices. Now, we have to discern which is which of all those. Now, I find it interesting that most of Christianity thinks that the devil speaking to them, they have no problem accepting that, but they have a big problem accepting hearing God's voice. Let's say, for example, you go by um, and your spouse or your roommate's dishes are starting to pile up, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you hear you know what, you could do it. Why don't you just do those dishes? And immediately some will think that's the devil. Really, would the devil tell you to do somebody else's dishes? Maybe, but really, mm -hmm. who's really saying that? Mm -hmm. Look at the fruit of what the voice is telling you. Mm -hmm. Is it love or is it fear? Yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. I, I think you're absolutely right on that. That's and, the way you know. And mm -hmm. you know what? And that's for people online. Y'all can tell us how he speaks to you. I think that'd be cool. I think that'd be really cool. So if you're on Facebook Live, you can tell us. We'd love to hear that. I think it's kind of cool. I think we're all kind of expressing a little different, but yet a little same. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of cool. It, it will look, I, I do believe that it looks when um, what you hear, and I'm not just saying just your ears, but just in general, when you what you hear, it, it goes against what I guess the norm or what, when I say the norm I'm talking about the world standards and how how you're supposed to do things what was one of Jesus's common sayings he who has ears to hear let him hear, let him hear. in his parables if you act if you heard them they don't make sense which is I'll be real and which is why he did it because those who really Think of him as one way, we'll just go off thinking, okay, he's whacked out. But the people who actually do have a desire to hear it, like his disciples, they would what? Draw close. They draw close and they ask questions. Mm -hmm. Hence why we had this question. They'll love go it. on a journey with him. I think this I think that's why I love doing this response. This this, this thing is because if you have questions, it's okay to ask questions. Because mm -hmm. I'm what kind? Yeah, because like, I think watch I don't know if you ever checked out the podcast for Bible Project yet. But they, when they're talking about a topic and they go through, they just went through a whole exile. They did like eight podcasts. It's just two guys just talking about the topic and they, and from their notes and stuff, they end up drawing up the videos and stuff, which I think is awesome. And you get to hear them, what they're going through. And they always, at the end, they always ask you to submit your questions. We'll always do a Q and R. Hence why I got the response from them. Um, and they do the Q and R because people have questions and they're like, go free. We'll try to get as many as we possibly can. I think it's great because if you do, if you do have desire to know, understand, you're going to do what? Ask questions. You really are going to ask questions. Are you real God? Mm -hmm. It's okay to not know. Yeah. 
What was else is the Wayne Jacobs this week? I'm sorry. Sorry, Jim. He was this man coming in and says, How do you know guys real or something like that? They were talking in another group, kind of like when we were at the Allen's. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I'm not here to answer that question. <laughs> this is what he's going, I'm not here to answer your question. I can't. Mm -hmm. He says, But why don't you just ask him yourself? He said, He, he went off in the corner. He said, like 15 minutes later, he looked at him and the guy was bawling his eyes out. He said, He walked over to him and he goes, What's wrong? He goes, I asked him. And he was bawling it out, and that's—I think that's—I think, that's, that, think that's so true. We're not here to answer questions. Now he may use us to answer a question or two, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Sometimes, it, sometimes it needs to be personal. And it's not for us to take the place of the Holy Spirit. Correct. And so, at his time, Wayne didn't feel led to respond to it. He just well, that's, you just ask him yourself in private because that's what he needed. That mm -hmm. that's how he was going to speak to. I think we can spend all day on this one. I think personally. I like this next one. This one's this one's kind of a challenging question. Uh-oh. Uh, what about healing? Mm -hmm. Does God that, still heal today? Yes. And this two-part. So I think it's good. If yes, then why don't we see it more? If not, why is it like that? I sense sacred counts about to be tipped. I think so too. I think this is a, a, a I think I, I do think this is a um it's kind of a difficult response sometimes. Um who says it doesn't happen? Uh, does he not heal? I mean, how many of us, who am I to say he doesn't heal? If somebody goes to a doctor and they had cancer and the cancer is cured, right? Or, or your mom. Who said that wasn't God? Do we just assume that it was the doctors? Probably, that's how I'm interested in, our think, I think our thinking kind of destroys it. Because we're look, sometimes, we think so much of what the English language says in the Bible. Like a miracle. And, it, and the words are like, oh, they were curious right then. No, if you actually look in the Greek, those words doesn't mean instant. Some of those things mean some of them were. Don't get me wrong. That's a miracle. Some of them were not. The healing, the word when it was using healing, that means it, it, it was a process. It didn't happen instantly. It was things that happened as they went in life. So who's to say... For instance, like your mom, who went through chemo, was it about 12 weeks? 16 weeks or something like that? 16 weeks of chemo and radiation? And she's cured cancer. Who said that wasn't God? Maybe guys, because I think it's interesting to talk about your mom. Her back started hurting really bad, right? They thought she had, was it her, a bulging dip or something was wrong with her back. So she went to MRI. During that MRI, they found breast, they found lumps. In her breast and then she went back to get biopsy they found that she had breast cancer now how so funny is that your back triggered would well, then find all this stuff out and then the process happened what she went to the necessary thing so what happened she got cured who said that it wasn't God that's my question I think mm -hmm. I think a lot, um, I also I think this isn't I mean it kind of answers the question um, and it bring I think it brings up something important that we often Think about and we say, well, if healing means you don't, you like for example, cancer. Healing means you don't have it. Like you don't, you don't go through it. You don't get it. So, um, I will also. I think. I think. I think their question is more or less. If I lay hands on you, I think that's the only way you get healed. That's what if I lay hands on you right now, mm -hmm. cancer gone. I just ripped it out of your body or whatever. It just it disappeared. Yeah. That's and I think that's a misinterpretation. That's a miracle. Mm -hmm. Not a heal. So do we see miracles today? I think that's a good question to ask. Because the Holy Spirit might lead, you might have a headache, and you're like, by his stripes I'm not healed, like, or I need to go, I need to go find somebody who has a healing yeah. gift. And that's what we search for, we, we go. He but might go, he them. might go, he, or he might go, let's go down to Kroger and buy some aspirin. Cause it, cause it may be more, cause it, cause it thins out your blood, and it may be actually helping your body in other areas that you have no clue about, or mm -hmm. borrowing it from a friend or a spouse or Correct. whatever. Can yeah. I borrow some of your aspirin? Sure. Yeah. Or them offering it. And could that we think that can't be God for some reason? And that's definitely not a gift of healing, really. A gift is something that you have that you share with someone else. The, the healing process isn't a one-size-fit-all 
scenario. I think it depends. I think it's it's like we're all individuals, so it's not healing at all. It's all unique. I think that's what I can't tell. So the question then comes: Do miracles happen today? Um, yeah. The answer is. I'm gonna say yes. Yeah. So let me. So the, let's talk about that. Then. What happened this weekend? There's a lot of things that happened. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a loaded question. <laughs> well, financially for us, you know, we, we we had we had a crazy month. Um, we had a crazy month. Had a lot of stuff, bills, and we had a lot of stuff. And you know, I get we I get paid. Our bulk of our money comes at the end of the month. That's when I get paid. And we are going. And we, there are certain things that are going to happen. And then what happened? It didn't happen. Yeah, so yeah, some you know, um, in business, uh, something went a different way, totally, a, 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 totally unexpected, and there were some things that were connected to that money that was supposed to happen once we get it. Um, ended up coming a totally different way. Yeah, well, than, yeah, because it got totally scheduled. It was twenty about a twenty four hour period where it goes, oh wow, we, yeah, we're gonna have it. It's gonna be a hard week. It's not. I'm not saying it's cakewalk now. Um, I was gonna hurry, but then what happened? It it happened within 24 hours. Things changed because something it came a different, like you said, it came a whole different way. Is that a miracle? I would say yes because it was just so it was different. It didn't it didn't it didn't go a long time. But did it go according to the rule, the way that it should have gone? No, and it was totally different. It, it it just went a different way than you thought it was. And I think when we think of miracles, I think we look at at the person. I think when we read the Gospels, because that's what we're looking at in the Book of Acts. We're, we're relying too much on English, the English translation, because the, the Greek and stuff is different. And I think it's a little different, and the situations that they were in was different and was unique. Like the man at the gate in the Acts, when John, Peter and John was walking up there, that was a miracle, was it not? Okay, so, but think about what, what happened there. They were walking into the synagogue. Now, Jesus walked through that synagogue, and the dude's been there for a long time. Did Jesus ever heal him? Nope. No. And so he was like, well, Jesus, there was a reason, because it was met. It was that it was a good time frame, because when he, the miracle happened, what happened? He leaped into the synagogue where everyone was baffled. Because they knew him for so long. Correct. And it was perfect. And now Jesus was, cold, what, physical Jesus was out of the picture. So how did this happen? The same thing as what happened before, the, and it happened again. Well, it was something that was triggered. It was something that triggered. And, that, and I think it's something that we want that to happen all the time. Are we God? Do we know everything? No. No. And the things happen in a certain way that we don't understand, but they are the right thing to happen. But we have to trust that. Correct. So do they happen? Do they happen all the time? No, no, no. In a certain way, in order, but it happens. It happens. It's not in a box. It's not one path. I think you hit right. You said it's not not one way. One one side. Healing. Does healing happen all the time? I mean, it happens all the time. You don't have to, when, and you don't have to be sick be, to correct. be. Be in a cancer hospital, and you hear that bing. You hear the bell ring. Did healing happen? Yeah. Somebody, maybe somebody who's cured cancer. They had no more cancer in their body. Did it just happen? Yes. Can man physically heal somebody? No. I don't care what we do. I can't heal you. Mm -hmm. But he can. I think sometimes we look at doctors as enemies. No? Or as gods themselves. Correct. Now, can I, can I, can I interject and, and talk about how living a life of feeling, knowing that you're loved by him changes, every, changes stuff? Big time. Big time. Because you're more apt in your relationship. And I think, in a way, that changes, that starts to change the ballgame. You do start to walk in more healthier lifestyles, healthier mm -hmm. situations. The, and that's true. Mm -hmm. But it's knowing that you love. Because mm -hmm. you're allowing him to work. And I mean, you might go to the, you might go to the doctor regularly. You might go to, you feel, <laughs> you, you already know, okay, you don't even to go get some cough medicine. You know, or you're like, oh, he's saying, no, no. We're, I got this, or we're gonna do it this way this time. Okay, great. Let's go this way then, and you just start walking like that. I, this is my opinion. Mm -hmm. All right. Ha! Ah. You, I'll, I'll read it. You answer. You respond. 
How do we really love the person slash sinner? I like this. But hate the sin. And I walk off on this one. Get back <laughs> over here. Stand right Oh, here. this is a great question, man. What's my cool outfit? <laughs> Go ahead. I'm thirsty. How do we really love the person? This is a simple question. I think it's a simple response. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's unique to, it's an individualistic situation. But what if, what if, the, what if the, the thinking is, if you, the thinking is what they're doing, we think what we do is who we are. And we tie our, our identity into what we do. And there's no, and oftentimes there's no understanding of who who we are in Christ. So we oftentimes run away from the person or the sinner. And we don't we're not there with them to, you know, help them and, and be in just be in relationship with them. It's um how do you hate the sin? It's <laughs> this, this is it's like it's I think I think this is a beautiful question because the only way the Okay, I, I'll, help I, I, I'll help you with this. I'll help you with this. But hate. How did Jesus do it with all the people in the gospel? What did Jesus do? No, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> what, like what, what did he, what did he do in the gospels? Think about all the sinners and people who came to eat with him. What did it say he did? I think this is, I think this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I just was, this is actually a pretty simple response. What did he do? He was right there. With the person in the midst of the the crack, all that was going on. He was eating with them. He was a friend. He was there. He was a friend. He stuck there. Did he say, "I hate what you do"? Did he say that? Did he even tell the religious leaders, "I hate what you do"? No. I think his expressions that he expressed is saying, "I love you." And I think, and I do think it's sometimes uh, individual person because Tim. You're the type, you are the type. If you're doing something wrong, what, what, how does it help? If I come to you confident privately and say, Tim, man, I, I'm concerned about what you do. You know, this and this and this. And that what, depends on what it is. Correct. And, it, and that depends on your relationship with me. Perfect. And I said, see, there we go. It's, it's loving them. It's by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. If I want to love the person, but not like the sin, and not look and not love the sin, how, how you can love sin itself, um, personally, it's going to be by the Spirit. Because, and, it, and sometimes we think that means I have to confront you. I think the initial thing is I have to come and confront you. Some people, it, it doesn't work like that. It, and the situation doesn't work like that. What they're doing may not work like that. I think it might be, sometimes it, it, it could be like, I just come, my roommate's dishes piling up, I'm just going to wash the dishes. Mm -hmm. And that may not have anything to do with what they're doing, quote unquote, the sin, mm -hmm. like religious, like I say, the sin they're doing. But what that triggers something to them. Mm -hmm. You're loving on them, mm -hmm. and it, it has an effect. Mm -hmm. But so, what's the Holy Spirit have to do? Mm -hmm. I think that's good. How yes. do we really love. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 please. Oh, so how do we really love the person, sinner, but hate the sin? It's through relationship. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. Which, in, it's interesting. I was just going to kind of follow up on what you just said before you said it. Mm -hmm. The relationship. With you, Korea, you're my sister. He's mm -hmm. your husband. There are things he can say to you that because of your relationship, he can say that I can't. Mm -hmm. And there are things I can say to you because you're my sister what? that he can't say because he's your husband. Mm -hmm. So... We approach things from different ways, and we can respond in different ways mm -hmm. because of and out of relationship. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to what you say. What'd you say? Healing and miracle is not in what? It's not in one lane or one box. One size fits all. One size fits all. Mm -hmm. So, have you love this the person and not love and hate what they're doing? I was to say not be involved in what they're doing in that sense, or I don't know. Hate what. the results. Hate the results of it. It's it's not one that fits all. Well, if you want, I, you can you say it's just relationship and it's just the Holy Spirit and loving. If you want to say that's one side fits all, yes. Mm -hmm. But what does that look like? And how is that experience? Very it's, different, unique, 
unlike how the world handles and deals with things. Correct. Mm -hmm. And I, I love this question. I think it's impactful because I think I I think the typical response is I have to come to you and tell you if you don't take it, then I'll take it in front of everybody else and right. That's not the case. Like it, it's so we're too quick to go through to the church and to telling everybody instead of where he focused on which is between you and them because it, and they forget and leave out the part because if you do this you have won your brother you have won that. I love your that. sister I also love what you said when it when something will trigger um, trigger something and because I think I think in that is also the metanoia which is change of mind and that is unless we have changed a changed mind about you know, when we're going through this life, and I said life is a journey, unless we're we're con we're constantly having a renewal of the mind, we're not going, um, we're going to keep sinning. We're not going to change. Things aren't going to look very much different from what we, what we do. And I'll take it. I'll take it a step further. I'll, 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 let's go to the this just in that area. Mm -hmm. And 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 this drives people nuts. So you do the dishes for your for your for your roommate and it has an impact say he's say he's doing something in his other part of his life that's not so great right and the dishes are seem like on the outside there should be no connection and you're like so how is me washing this dishes going to affect this part what if down in the past something happened where there's dishes involved which then leads somebody down to the path that they're on it's love, we talk about this, love gets to the root of the problem. And it doesn't always look like you're getting to the root, but something as simple as that could get to the root. This gentleman's going in, by the way. It gets to the root, and it actually heals the root, and it changes that root. And if you have a changed root, what happens? Change mind, ch change out. Yeah, the tree's different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The plant is different. That means the fruit is different. And so I think, I think it's so simple Yet, so it can be complicated, and so that's why I was. I was yeah. Yeah. Um, that's why when you were talking about the when he the dishes and you start talking, I was like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, I know. yeah. It starts to go a little bit deeper because it, it. We don't think stuff happens. Um, we don't think that it can actually get to the root, but it's so funny. It's just a simple dishes because we don't understand it. That's why I said, are we God? No. Do we see do, and do, know everything? Exactly. <laughs> and this, it could be checking back to that person's mind. Something happened to this. Maybe they were, abused. Maybe they were yeah. abused. Or something happened. Something was said to them. Maybe they cut their hand. Like It, it seems so silly, but it could be the most silly, simple little thing that has a huge impact on somebody's life. And the Holy Spirit doesn't go. He doesn't go this way. He goes this way. He goes back to the root. He starts to heal the root, and then as he starts, the, the roots begin to get healed. He starts going up the tree. If you want to fix a problem, what's going on the tree? You have to go down to the roots. You got to you got to take care of the roots. Once the roots fixed, then you end up fixing the rest of it. And that's what he does. He goes down deep, goes back to your past, starts to heal you, and you start to see it different. And then you're loving the person, but you're not may not liking the results that they're doing. They're doing. But that process could be like Jeffy and Family Circus going all over the place. And you may feel like that. Yep. Yeah, and you're going, okay, so I'm supposed to get over here way on the right, so why am I over here doing something on the left? And the Holy Spirit knows that who he's doing. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty that's what we're going to trust him. I'm about to do something real quick. So I'll get to the next one. No, I, I love it. That was good. That was good. All right. What would you say our biggest struggle that we have each day? And I'll be back. Go ahead. Um, I think we have. What's yours? Serious. What's mine? I have trust issues. Mm -hmm. Um, and and some and I think it's rooted in just being scared about some stuff just not happening or thinking about some of the things that has happened in my past and you know how will that affect my future. Or things that could happen. Mm -hmm. Things that could happen at this time. Trust issues. So when you don't have trust, what do you end up doing? You try to do 
started to do with yourself? I mean, it's bingo. So, um, I, I, self reliance. You know, somebody else walking in? I think. That's, that's a long might be, day. It might be pizza. Oh, I think come I, on in. If, if you yeah. ask me, I think our biggest struggle is, is, is thinking that we're God mm -hmm. ourselves. And 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 you be like, well, you empower stuff. It's not. It's not even that. It's about make, doing what's right for me. Um, we were just talking about business. I said, or for a business to be totally technically successful, a business needs to be helping others and not be about itself. Does that make sense? And we talk about was it was the number one thing we talk about self care. You got to take care of yourself. I find that I actually get to take care of myself when I get to take care of somebody else. Does that make sense? That, I know that sounds weird, sounds crazy, but actually helping somebody else, I'm actually taking care of myself. And so it's contradicting what we talk about and, and, and what we've been taught, but it's really true. Um, and I think the struggle we have each day is thinking that we can do it ourselves. We're such guys. I can make the right decisions for myself in my life, and I can do what's right. And that's us going back to the garden, thinking that I can make choose what's right or wrong for myself, and that, and that really comes down to relationships. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Yeah. Go ahead, Tim. Go ahead, no. you. That hits it right on the head. And I think that leads to so much stuff. And I see you. You're like, well, oh, for me, it's the sin. I'm like, but the result of sin is what? Or the, the, what? What was the root cause of it? Thinking I'm God. Mm -hmm. Because and we don't. Um, one of the, the biggest struggles too is we don't realize how much we're loved and in that we we rely on ourselves yeah. to do things um, yeah. fear will start you know fear will take prominence in our lives and how we respond to things and how we treat others yeah. has that ever happened in your marriage of course Always. has that ever happened in anybody's marriage yes yes, yes. And so I look at it like this, and, and, and I know that we get a lot of people talk about sin, but and it, it really goes back to this. We'll, we'll take adultery, fornication, and that's one of the biggest topics ever. And we can look like this. Somebody decides for himself that it's right to do that. And they're making the choice for themselves. And what happened? They do it. And it's weird. It's us thinking that choosing right, what's right and wrong for ourselves, and we end up doing it. We suck as a as a God. Mm -hmm. I think that's I think that's beautiful because in the garden, if you look at the beginning, especially in the Hebrew, when he said, "And let us make man in the south," and he says, "Never plant," he's talking about this stuff. It, the wording is all partnership with him, within himself. Yeah, and it's, it, he, he God was talking to Adam, the Father, Son, and Spirit were talking to Adam. Let's have partnership with you. You can only do this by partnership. This is all partnership. Replenish our partnership. This is partnership. You know, subdue the land. Partnership. You can't subdue on your own, Adam, because you make horrible choices. But I'm here. Like he was telling him, I'm here. Let's do this together. And that's one day we feel we Adam and Eve said, No, we're gonna do it ourselves. And he, look at us today. We're in that F the world. Um and it's going to spiral out of control. And I guess the biggest things we struggle with every day. I'm going to do what I think is right for myself. Because we don't, oftentimes we don't believe that God can help us with the struggle. And we do it on our own. And we have struggle. <laughs> or we thought before he didn't do it. And so therefore, based on that experience, we trust that we have to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or we don't want to bother him with some small little thing. Because yeah. we can do it ourselves. Or we're supposed to do it ourselves. Yeah. Right. God helps those who help themselves. Which is not in the Bible. Not in the Bible and not so much like that seems like work to me. And I mean work outside him. Mm -hmm. so. Good. I like this next one. I like this Kulata. Oh, Kulata is awesome. <laughs> Highly recommend it to everybody on Facebook. Oh, um, it's probably full of sugar and it's just making us bad as we speak. <laughs> I love this next one. Holy. Could you all explain what it means when God is holy, therefore we be holy too? 
I'm gonna I'm I'm take this one. Y'all been taking first. No, 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 no. Because I'm gonna get in this little tantrum and then I'm gonna do it. Actually, we just talked about this a couple weeks ago. We were talking about uh, work and love and stuff. Yeah, you might want to move. I saw it. Right? Right? You ready? What does it actually mean when he says he's holy? God is holy. Doesn't mean like he does, he does, his ways are not our ways and blah, 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 right? I think that's what we say, what he does. What is holy about him is that his relationship, the Father, Son, Spirit, is totally different than what we have of our own selves, on our own. His relationship is separated. It's in this beautiful relationship where, in, and I'll talk about our relationship. Our relationship is about what's right for me. I'm going to have a relationship to you because you're going to, uh, propel me not me helping you but me helping on myself oh, it's about all it's all about me if I, just to be real <clears throat> i got a lot of relationships because i just want to have sex for myself right that's me pleasure for myself that, be real that's that's what we do we have relationships with others for the benefit of our own selves to make ourselves look good so on so on it's about me 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 this relationship is about you i'm gonna do this for you dad no, I'm going to do this for you, son, and dad. And you have this unselfishness in this relationship where all, all three are willing so eagerly and passionately to do what's best for the other one with no direct result of themselves. That makes sense? That's, that's so beautiful. Jesus said, Dad, I love you so much. I'm going to do this right to bring home your children. For you, and no, and no, in disregards for his own self, cross. This, 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 this desire to lift the each one up without promoting themselves, and it's so beautiful and so tight knit, sharing into each other. It is so different. When it says God is holy, let's talk about this. And it says when you be, I'm holy. For I'm holy, you be holy. For I'm holy. He says, I want y'all to do the same. I want y'all to be the same. And you can't have that unless you, you already have this. It's, that's why I think it's beautiful. I think it's a beautiful verse. Peter, and if you look, look at the context, Peter's already talk, establishes this and moves towards this now. He says, you are love. Now love one another. Just as you were loved. You can have us have a relationship with each other just as the relationship we've now been grafted into. We've been brought and adopted into. And let's mirror that same thing here. Let's be have an unselfish um, ness towards each other. Tim, I'm I'm gonna be in a relationship with you. Not for me, but for you. That's what it should look like. I'm gonna here, I'm here for you. That's my mind. Not in disregard for myself. You you need a lift. Let's go there. Who cares about my schedule? Let's go. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit wise, but it's, I'm here for you. And then you're here for me. Mm -hmm. I'm here for you. And you're here for me. And you have this beautiful relationship that it reflects this. And that's what it meant when Adam and Eve remained in his image, was that image, that relationship image. Doesn't mean that I exactly look just like him. That's what we always assume. Now, it's our relationship is then ref is now a perfect image of him. Because Jesus became the perfect image, not because it was just him. He was the perfect image because of his relationship he had. And it takes two to tangle. So how does that relate to holiness? It's holy. Well, you think I think people think holiness is doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. And so how is that different? It's different because we, we assume that's what holiness means, and it's not. Holiness means I'm now reflecting out the relationship I have. That means I, I mean let's be real. When I understand I'm in this, this beautiful relationship, and I realize how loved I am, and just how my dad, Jesus, and the Spirit just lift me up without regards for themselves. I am then turning turn to you and go. I'm going to be about you. Now, am I not going to treat you wrong? Now, the, the idea is, am I not going to treat you wrong? No, I'm going to then take you and platform you up. Does that mean I'm going to commit adultery? We don't always think adultery means sexual. It's not. It means I'm going to cheat on our relationship. It means I'm going to be selfish. Or abusive. Abusive. Yeah, exactly. It's not. 
is actually I'm doing the what's right for for the relationship. What's right to you. So that makes you holy. Now I walk in holiness. I walk in my relationship, and it, it starts to bleed out. And it's That's by he, him through. Yeah, it's by him. It's by the Spirit. The, the spirit. spirit is here to help. And it's not like now we'll do it. No, he goes. Let's go. Let us go through it. And it's a partnership. Because I'm going to miss the ball at times. And that's where love and forgiveness, that's where forgiveness comes. And you're going to accept me because I'm imperfect. I'm going to accept you because you're imperfect. Now we start looking at each other different. And then when you mess up, I'm going to forgive you because I'm forgiven because he loves me. And he, the Holy Spirit's going to help me with that. It's going to remind me how forgiven I am. How much I am love. And it's going to start to check. Petri, are we going to do stuff wrong to each other? <laughs> yes. Difference is, is what we do next. You, we are. We're not going to burn that bridge. We're going to go. We're going to get in there together and repair it with the Holy Spirit's help. We we are perfectly right for Him and to be in relationship with Him because we have a flesh, which is the imperfection. I think it's beautiful. I, it's not, I, don't, it's not, I don't think it's scary. I love it because it, it, I love it when it says "Holy, Holy, Holy." Why did they say it three times? The angels declare holy, holy, holy. It was emphasizing. Father, Son, Spirit. Their relationship is so holy. It's so separate. Holy means separate, uncommon, different. It's different than what what we what we have created here for ourselves. And it's so different. Therefore, it's uncommon. Hmm. The better word I said say it's uncommon. Holy, holy means uncommon. That's uncommon. That relationship is so uncommon in, to in us. In the Hebrew, Hebrew, or is it the Greek that means uncommon? Yeah. yeah. All right. I like this next one. I get really upset with myself when I keep messing up. I do that sometimes. I want to do everything right, but I seem to come really short of it. What am I supposed to do? Woo! That's a touchy subject. No, nah, that's not touchy. I think that's a great one. I think that's a great question because how many of us have ever done that? Woo! So we're not alone. So, and this is not a stupid question. Someone would consider this to be a stupid question. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's beautiful. Yeah. It, it goes back to um, keep an eye what on we time. were just talking about and what I just said um, that we are perfectly right for him and to be in relationship with him because we aren't perfect because we have a flesh you can't living in this world you cannot not have a flesh and when I say flesh it's the um, the um, I'm blanking out right now it's okay I'll help you I'll help yeah. you the, the, it, I think it relates back to our first question mm -hmm. it's a progress strive for progress not perfection does that make sense? And I think if we look at, I think there's so many ways we can look at this. If we're trying, if we expect perfection from ourselves, we have a, a wrong expectation for ourselves. And that's what typically happens. It's a religious expectation. It's a progress every day. And it, because we're focused on progress, product, instead of the progress. The progress, yeah. And I think that gets us off. And then also what gets us off is that we realize we get into this part here of beating ourselves up because we forget who he is. When we expect perfection in ourselves, we forget. Let's go back to what you said. Progress is beautiful because we get to know him. If I'm expecting perfection, I'm going to draw away from him mentally. Am I close to him? Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with him. I'm just not recognizing him. And I'm going to forget who he is it's like what he has done it's like me standing next to joshua and not acknowledging that he's standing right there correct and so you you draw you draw away from that and that and that and, and realize that you don't know him like you, you you're forgetting him forgetting he's right there forgetting that he loves you you're forgetting what jesus destroys sin destroy the religious expectations really i'll be real and that he's he's wanting to help He's called the helper for a reason. He's like, for me to help you do good. No, he's he's helping us in our relationship with him. He's, he's not helping you so that you do the good. No, he's bringing he's, you back to him. And it's, it's knowing him that makes a difference. You. 
changes you. He reminds you how you love. And that brings us back. So what am I supposed to do? Let the Holy Spirit just, he's right there talking to you. He wants to tell you love. Does Keep it short. We have yeah. Yeah. Does, does um, his love for you change you? Does her love for you change of course. you? That makes a difference. Bingo. All right, let's go. We got a couple more questions. I'm trying to get through all these. A few more questions. I okay. Oh, gosh. All right, I hear this phase used a lot. You got to have, got, got to have more faith. So how can I have more faith in what does it look like? And I'll be real, that's horrible. I, that's, Not a horrible question. No, ho that's a great question. Horrible response to somebody who may be falling and tripping down or what, or struggling or scared. We put out a post this week that said it's okay to be scared. <laughs> um, what was the response? Oh, the response was overwhelming. Um, as much as the one that said that it's okay to cry. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason being is this response here is by somebody who's playing religion who doesn't even know themselves. Or know that they're playing religion. Correct. Faith is, is, is a response to his love. So the question is, if you really want to grow your faith, uh, we'll do two parts. Responding like that is, is a horrible response. Um, but if you want your faith to see it grow, is is to indulge in your relationship. Let him love on you right where you are. Correct. Right where you are, literally. If I'm scared, I think it's an opportunity to go, I'm scared. I need to know you more. That, Dad, what do I not know about you? That if I knew, it would change me. Sound like Wayne. Yeah. Sound like Wayne. You sound like Wayne. There we go. I think I think that's there perfect. It. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, okay, let's go to the next one. What can I do to help people who are stuck in religion and help them to see that it is about a relationship and not by your works? Demonstrate. First answer: nothing. Yeah. <laughs> what can you do? You do nothing. nothing. You cannot do anything on your own. Correct. And you're like, what? Well, how can I get them to see? You don't do anything. And now let's say this. What does the Holy Spirit want to do? He's going to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. And it's going to show them. Right? He says, he says, if you love one, they're just as you love. By doing that, others will what know that you're with them. Mm -hmm. Because it'll be a different kind of love. I love, how, I love how uh, some, some people say the Bible is so vague. Actually, I'm, I'm loving that more and more because it allows... The relationship. This, the relationship to we're gonna get to that so by the way it don't. allows the relationship to flourish and allows the spirit to be creative we we, we don't think about the spirit being creative all right so the, the thing is to do what i would say just you can't do nothing it's by the spirit what he leads you to he's going to demonstrate it out somehow yeah. look the book of Revelation scares me, and I don't like to read it. Why would the Holy Spirit want us to read it? I, I was I used to be there, and it's like one of my favorite um, books to to read. Now, and it, I you have to you have to um, if the Spirit is leading you to read it, but you have to read it in its context. So, what made it scary to you? Um, it was like the the beast. Oh my gosh! Are we gonna like see see these like the, the way they're describing how these beasts are? You you actually think that that's what's what it is in front of you? I, um, I, I think I think the scary overall general will be this. He's going. God's going to do that to me. I'm going to be one left behind, being destroyed. Yeah. The plagues are going to hit me. I'm going to be swallowed up in the fire. Me, Am I going to float up into the clouds and not yeah. get a chance? No. To, to, I, you know, I, only, I think this is destruction. I'm going to be part of it because I'm so bad. I think that's typically what it would be. Um, is that it's go, I'm going to be the one being destroyed. Because you're looking at yourself instead of at him. And that scares the crap out of you. Mm -hmm. And I'll be real, just me, the book is not even like that. Oh, well. It's, it's more figure, it's, 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 it's not meant to be. It's more of a, it's more, it's not the picture, little. the pictures tell a story, but not tell exactly what it's not futuristic. It, it, there is part that is futuristic. And actually there's parts it is most of it is all futuristic. And it's actually, actually, it's it actually, it's telling the same story over and over again until you get to the end, which is really futuristic mm -hmm. time frame. 
but it's really about a story how they how the beast is always overcome uh, each thing's always overcome it's not us being taken out it's us going through it and how we get through it him 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 it's like a repeat him 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 if you didn't know the bible always repeats itself it repeats how many times did how many ex were the word exiles used how often do people go exile into babylon it happens over and over right History it, re it repeats itself. itself. It's constantly mm -hmm. repeating. He's telling you how you overcome it. Him, 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 him. It's him. very Just much look at the judges. Yeah. yeah, the book of judges. Yeah, it's very Sorry. much like Jesus' parables. All right, we got a couple more minutes. Okay. All right, we got two questions. Mm -hmm. Two more. All right. And, and this, this next one, we should be really quick with this one because it's simple. We already just touched on. What should the, the church, or what should church, really look like? What's happening right now? Cooking up something. The 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 relationship. His relationship. We talk about the holiness. Mm -hmm. We should really look like that. Not once a week, right? No. Church is truly not a building. And there's nothing wrong with getting yeah. together on a Sunday and talk and stuff and do stuff. But so it has to be beyond that. Yep. You are. Yep. You are the temple. Even even if you're not being with the same people, you. Don't, I, I grant. I do. We should get together with these people who who come gather. But I can also venture out with others too. Because they're not the enemy, not competition. Mm -hmm. Who is God drawing next? Having you draw next to? Bingo. What is that, Kramer? <laughs> oh gosh, his jumpiness cracks me up. All right, so last question. Let's we'll spend a little more time on this one. Okay, this this All right, next, I got, I got okay, what, Oh, okay. you save your voice. Oh. <laughs> I'll read it. This might seem like a dumb question. What is the Bible truly about, and why do we? Have I'm not answering. I'm not responding. You just wanted Let's, to read the question? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I said, save your voice for the response. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can go back and record it and look at it. You go back. Bible is. What is it about? Okay. And why do we have it? It's a, it's a love story. Why, why do we have it? Why do we have it? Tim? Because they go over. No, I. <laughs> well, then like answer. Said, then I'm not up. commenting. <laughs> all right. So why do we have it? Um, I, I, I think it, it all it's 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 creation. It's like it's a created thing. It all points to to him. And all create. I think it says in um, is it in Genesis? It talks about all creation. Help me out here. All creation points back to him. Are you? Okay? What the I'm just, I'm just laughing. No, don't look at him. Don't look at me. Look at look at Google. Okay, you can do no, that no. too. Okay, so why does she respond? She's responding. Um, what's it truly about? It's really true about him. I'll be real. It's not. I, I think it does show us, especially in the old. The old it really shows us that we suck as God. Trying, to be, trying God. to be good. Trying to be good on our own and trying to do stuff ourselves. And you see this thing. You see Genesis 1 through 11 repeat it over and over in new different situations. They get, they get their own, for instance, you can go, you can look at, you see the judges. They want judges, right? What happened? You see Genesis 1 through 11. You see them go, they conquer, right? They soar, and then what happens? Fall. Judges, okay? So then all of a sudden they had the prophets. What happened, what happened then? They soar, and then they fell, right? And then they go, we want a king. They soared, what happened? They fell. And you kept on seeing the same thing over. They always fell in the exile. There was always a conquering nation. They fell and it, bam, they got they got they got they got destroyed, right? This stuff happens. It's like a constant, constant thing happening. Foom, foom, foom. And you know what's so funny is what they decided to look at, they wanted a, they want a judge. Well, not a judge like we think. A judge, a, a prophet, king. a king. What does Jesus look like? It looks like all three, don't we? Mm -hmm. I think it's beautiful. You see the story repeated over and over again that we, we suck, but yet he still loves us. Mm -hmm. And I think in the new, you start to see that. You see the community come together and realize that. And why we have it? Because to show us exactly that. Yeah, to show us that. And, and I think sometimes we use it as a box, as a way he only communicates with us. And that sucks because that, that negates our relationship. Um... And like I said, I, I love the New Testament because it's like the, the community coming together and realizing, wow, we do suck. 
wow, he's so freaking awesome. Look what he did to bring us into relationship with himself. And 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 just talking talking amongst himself. I, I see that Paul talking to him, even though it's a leather, it's a, a leather, like a conversation talking about what we talked about since the reason. It speaks violence in the conversation that I'm talking amongst themselves and saying, man, this, this really impacts my life. This relationship goes beyond, this such, this such love goes beyond just this. It, it, man, it impacts everything. And encouraging one another to allow it to impact. Allow yourself to be loved. And if there's some, seems some like this, you can if you can, if you want to sit there and perceive it so harsh. I don't know, I see it so beautiful. It's somebody who cares. I don't know, that's just me. I, I, it's mm-hmm. a beautiful, I think mean, you have it. It's a love story. In the beginning, it shows that he's always there in our screw up, and us just starting to realize, starting to realize it. Mm-hmm. You're still trying to look up the verse. No, I have the verse, but I was curious to know. And then I think it had it right, because when Paul, when Jesus went to the, the old, you know, so funny, he didn't show, I love it, he didn't show the destruction of man. He talked about himself. <laughs> How he has always been there, how they always been there for them and love them, and then brought them out. And why, why do we have it? I, I think just to help us to 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 understand him and why he why in the journey of what it took for him to do what we could not do. Okay. And I think it's interesting. And everybody's like, "Well, he could just talk to me." I think sometimes you we talk about this before. That's why I love this question. We all communicate somewhat different. Mm-hmm. This book, the book, actually communicates to us and allow and allows us to draw, re, re, rescind our defenses, and allow the shields to come down, and allow us to come and allow us to experience the relationship that we have. Yeah, with open arms. And, yeah, and it, it inspires us into that, and that's what we should look like for each other: is inspire each other to. Be in that relationship and, and coming out of our shell, and it looks like us taking care of each other, loving, and so on and so on. So having, uh, so having the Bible is a demonstration of that love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it, everything where they're trying to, I think the Bible, I think the way it was brought together is beautiful. Personally. Love, love was still being demonstrated yeah. even back then in, in the Old Testament. Yeah. So. Just as much as today. Correct. Bless you, honey. You don't think I hear you? So I, that's that's it. That's, for it. To, for as far that's as a lot of questions. questions. Actually, 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 it was less questions than it was last week. It's just more response. Should you do it again next week? No, we're not next week. We're not going to be here next week. What about after? We can do it next week. If anybody has more questions, we can do some more. Mm-hmm. I would love to. I I guess plenty of time for questions. Yeah, get plenty of time for questions. Mm-hmm. So. Yes. So with that, uh, we love y'all. We love you. We'll see y'all later. Next week.